Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of Robbie Minds. My name is Freddy Ladi Adimefe, and I'm hosting you today. I'm holding the fort for our dear friend Ibuka, who is unavoidably absent. Now, today we're going to be having very interesting uh, conversations. Every opportunity we come um, before you, we have interesting things to talk about. On Sunday, a young man left his house to go watch a football match, but he did not return. That young man is called Eddie Johnson, and if you've been following the news on social media across platforms, you would have heard of the, the story of Kolade Johnson. Today we have been joined here by two people who are very close to him to share their experience. And perhaps we get to learn from this. According to the police, um, Kolade was actually killed by a stray bullet from one of the officials of the police themselves, who was on a raid in that zone. They were looking for maybe some cultists or something, and then unfortunately the stray bullet hit Kolade. But this opened a much bigger conversation, which we'll even touch today the conversation about SARS and how they are treating the citizens of Nigeria. Do we still need them in this country? And what is the functional relevance of having them? We're going to get into all of this conversation. But today I'm being joined here by, like I said, the niece of late Kolade Johnson. Um, her name is Dolapo Lukman. Dolapo, you're welcome. Thank you very much. And also, an, an actor who is also a friend of Kolade. He's the convener of justice for Kolade. And if you're part of the movement, of course, you would have seen him. His name is Roxy. Antak, Roxy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I cannot imagine the, how the week has been, but Lukman, I think I'd like to start with you. But I did, um, how has this week been for you, this one week of going through the grief of losing your uncle? It's been hectic. Sometimes I just try to sleep to think maybe I'll wake up and probably it's just a dream. <laughs> I heard about it on Sunday evening, and I was just coming back from Ikiti, an excursion. And believe me, when I heard, I was, I just, I was dumbfounded. I was shocked. I didn't even know what to do. Then I had to just call my mom, and then she was crying on the phone. And I was like, wow, I wanted to come home that day, but it was already 6.30. So they said they actually had to hold me not to come home. So the next month, that was Monday morning. I came home. And since Monday, it has been really ethical. because a lot of people have been coming. Everything has been so overwhelming because the most painful part is now that he's dead, he has become more popular. Like, I don't understand. Some people know him. You know this. You know him. Okay, when he was struggling, when he was trying to make a living, where were you guys? So everything is just so overwhelming and painful. You know, I, I would like you to tell us some personal things about him that he, you know of him. But one thing is certain, his loss was the loss of every Nigerian. Mm. Um, looking at a young man with dreams, hoping to get married and raise a good family, just go in that way. So tell us a bit about him. I, I mean, what, some of the reports we read, um, Kolade came across to us as a very, very nice, caring, warm young man. But from your own personal experience, what he, was he like? He had the best personality to say. No, I'm not surprised that a lot of people actually knew him because he was one to know. Um, Uncle Kola, like I, I mostly call him, he was someone I always prayed that, okay, when it's time for me to get married, I should find someone exactly like him. He was very caring, very loving, and he was like a backbone, supports me in everything I do. At the time I called him and I was so pissed about an exam I wrote, and he was like, don't mind them. The, don't mind them. They didn't mark it very well. You, you passed. Don't mind them. And he just, I knew for a fact that yes, I actually fumbled. But the way he brought it up to me and the way he made me feel, he made me feel proud of myself. That is the kind of person he is. He compliments and so proud of everybody. He's, a, he's one of the best cook I know. You can cook anything. Anything cookable, you can cook. And he's, one, he's someone I know that yes, he does not um, differentiate between what a woman does and what a man does. He does everything for anybody at any time you need him. He was very loving and he, as he always called me my baby, my baby, my first fruit. He took care of me when I was small. I knew him since when I was going to the crash because then he would always back me and take me out. Then we'll go out together. When he traveled to South Africa, which was four years ago, it was really painful. But, you know, as a big girl, he, he tells me, you're a big girl, you come back. You, I'll come back soon. Don't worry. So when he came back 2017, on February, because I remember my birthday, it was supposed to come February 1st, which was my birthday. And like I said, we were very close since when I was small. But he, his flight was canceled, so he came back the week of my birthday. 
That was 2017, February 7th, a week later. So since then, he has been around. And yeah. anytime I go back to school, he travels to Abuja or goes anywhere. When I'm coming back home, he's definitely at home. Well, I, I can Im imagine. Um, once again, sorry for your loss. Yeah, but Roxy, okay. I'd like to come to you. I mean, you've known him from your university days at Uniben. Yes. And um, just watching him also grow as much as you have gotten into movies. And now, um, but this last week of pushing for uh, the, conveying the justice for Color Day, what has been the experience for you? And are you getting justice at this point? Thank you very much. Um, we hope for justice. We hope for a court hearing and jail term for the culprit. You know, when I heard the news about Kola, at first I didn't know which Kola they were talking about. I wasn't sure. And then his face was put before me on WhatsApp. I said, no, 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 this can't be Kola. I mean, it can't be the Kola I know. I call him Kola Styles. I've always known him as Kola Styles since Uniben days. Before I, we left school and then we, we connected after some years. Kola is somebody that has always encouraged me. Even if he sees me as a brother, maybe a big brother. But anytime any of my movies come out or hit the cinemas or Iroko TV or wherever, Kola will surely come to my WhatsApp, my inbox, and say, Roxy, I admire you, your courage, your strength, the skies, the stars, everything for you. Just keep pushing. You know, this is Kola, just like she said, when she had um, a bad paper in her exam and all that, Kola will always be there to encourage you and smile. I don't know how it does it, but it has this warm heart. This, this warmness in his heart that gives you strength, even if you failed. So for that reason, I began to see Kola as a brother. You know, because you have so many friends, so many acquaintances. How many of them really do that to you? When I heard that Kola was dead, I couldn't handle myself. I busted into tears for a while, even if I was alone in my room. And then we, me and myself and my friends, we have a group on WhatsApp. We chatted each other up on what to do. Um, somebody suggested... Somebody by the name of Chooks. Chooks is based in Lagos, an entrepreneur. He has a hotel and a lounge and all that. So he suggested that, why don't we do a protest? You know, I said, yes, I concur. Let's, let's do this. Let's do a protest. You know, and um, before we knew it, uh, I suggested that we, you know, we do a poster to make it very formal so that this poster can go from place to place. People can repost it for us and all that. To be frank, we we're hoping that when we do this protest, a lot of others who are concerned would join us in the protest. As at that time we started the protest, we had nothing. We had no one. It was just us. No, but we came out anyway. Our plan was to go to the governor's office and hopefully, you know, be heard by somebody. And um, as God will have it, I got a phone call from my door state saying that they also want to protest. Mm. And I told them, well, um, this is not, I'm, I'm, I'm actually new to this. I've never led a protest before in my life. I think you guys should follow your hearts. If you are confused about anything, just make sure you pick the keywords that was used in the poster that we did in Lagos State. So, so that's why you see peaceful march for color. We don't want policemen shooting bullets at us, saying, why are we protesting? I'm not saying that's what they do, but now we, we don't feel safe anymore. We feel threatened by our own police officers. Mm. So it's sad. I think I, we are progressing. I really want us uh, to speak into that. Now, there was a post somebody shared on, on, on Twitter where he said, I, I was running away from armed robbers, and then I looked and I saw the policemen, and I ran back to the armed robbers. I mean, we're getting to a point where we could laugh about these things, but they're not really funny. Yeah, no. um, in, in the pursuit of justice, um, you look and you find out every other month you're finding people who were ki killed innocently, or you find people who were picked up by SARS. What do you think we can do? do with the police to get them to understand that and maybe find a way to deal with these issues so there won't be another case of Kolade on our hands. What are the things we can do at this point in time? Okay, um, for my own layman understanding, because I'm not into um, governance or politics, so I'm not even a lawyer, I'm just an actor. From, from my understanding, I think um, most of these things start from the top. Mm. Yes, in as much as we might try to deny that fact, these things start from the top. If every superior officer or DPO faces a sanction when a police officer shoots a bullet in the air for no reason, these things will be curtailed. But when these things happen, it's swept under the carpet. Maybe the culprits are prosecuted or may not even be prosecuted, they might be covered up. The DPO smiles home like nothing happened. So if the superior officers in their jurisdictions are sanctioned accordingly, according to the gravity of the offender or whatever, I believe, you know, what I'm trying to say is this. And 
Okay. I just think action speaks louder than words. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time this has happened, the second mm -hmm. time. So, like, they have gotten used to it because nobody speaks about it when it happens. That's what yeah. I believe. So, sure. if, for, if uh, for an example, something that happened, just like this, and case like this happened before, and they were thoroughly punished, and they were um, probably sanctioned or dismissed, then a case like this won't be happening again. A lot of cases that happened in Nigeria, whereby we didn't even get to know about it. Mm -hmm. So it's not, they just um, implement something and don't actually use action to back it up. It, you so, know, just after Connor's death, yes. in the Mashakilo area, one other guy was killed because he didn't release his Okada. By still, still, still still. by police, yes. So, you so know, in, um, I think it was in August 2018, even the vice president actually said, recommended the overhaul of SARS. And uh, so, so far, we were wondering if you were created to protect citizens and to intensify the battle against um, criminals, why are you coming to a point where, uh, I mean, they just shoot at sight? Must you even open fire at all? And if you must shoot somebody, must you, I don't know, must you, can't no. you aim for... The reason they is they, don't, they no longer have respect for human life. No. That's, that's but, one thing you should... But it, the question out. is, how did we get there? I even saw the post where the man said, tattoos, um, the commission of police in Lagos State was complaining that tattoos and, um, and dreads, and dreads yeah. are not our culture. That you make yourself an easy target when you have tattoos. And, and I'm thinking What's to myself... Culture? No, no, let's go back to the African man. We're not trying to digress. Yes. But let's go back to the ancient African man. What's our culture? Who says dreads are not our culture? You get my point? Yes. No, because we are not trying to imitate the Western lifestyle of wearing suits. Why should we be wearing suits in, uh, in, in very, very hot regions? Pardon me, I'm wearing suits. Mm. <laughs> no, but what I'm trying to say is, why would you say dreads and tattoos are not our culture? Have you gone back history? Have you gone back the lanes of the Egyptians, the ancient uh, Bini Empire? We did this thing. Mm. So we're just trying to be civilized now. Don't say they're not our culture. That's not know, a yardstick to say this person is a criminal. Talking about this, I can even remember some um, ancient movies where you have Africans with um, stuff like charcoal. They use black makeup, stuff. In place yeah, of to makeup, create, yes. yeah, in place of makeup to create some and kind of... And also use that identity also to identify themselves so from other clans or tribes. No, so it's, wrong. It's, a, it's wrong for the police themselves to say something So like if that. they really believe that ordinary tattoo is a crime and even having... Um, and dreads, they it's a law. Then we know we're I going just, here. I feel, number one, they should just be disbanded first. It should not be anything like stars or anything for now. Then it should come back. But in this case, when they, are, when they are to come back, they should have gone through a thorough training for like six months or so. So you recommend training, 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 intensive training. Okay, let, but let, first, let, they should be disbanded. Because at, be I, don't, I believe none of them are in the stars in court actually mm -hmm. know what to do you know what? when it comes to mm -hmm. relating with civilians. You know what? You know, mm -hmm. we, we hear words on the street, right? You know, Word on the street know, is that know, some of these guys in SARS this, actually buy their way into you know, SARS. The guys who killed um, Kola Day were actually alleged to be the anti-cultism group under the police force. Okay. And if the police force put it out that these are not members of SARS. But we know that SARS have been trending for the longest time for doing yeah. the same thing. Yeah. That's the, why I'm not even laying emphasis on SARS or SACS. Just the Nigerian police. Because, I mean, if, even, so even the, if there's the, a reformation the, 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 in SARS... The, 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 the demand for reforms... Um, the thing again is that sometimes Nigerians just have a way of sleeping through crisis. And we wake up and realize another death, and then we wake up and then... So, mm. in t let me ask you personally, have you been satisfied? I know the police visited your house, the commission of police visited your mom, I guess. But have, in terms of your family, how are you guys dealing with this? Do you think you've been satisfied with the response you're getting from the police and that Colour Day will, will not just die in vain? Well... We are not, you can never be 100% satisfied, number one, because he's still alive, he's still living. But fine, yes, they say, okay, he's going to go to prison. But here yeah, we prison, what if, we don't only want prison and justice for him. We want to get it, but it is never going to happen again. So you want change, not just... Change, in, not, not, not just only justice, because yes, it's, okay, fine. It might not happen to us again, which we don't, I don't pay to happen to anybody. But we don't want to get it by six months from now or one year from now, a case like this is still going to come up again. That is why I said we need disbarment of SARS or SACS or whatever they call their names. And it should come back again. Because fine, we need anti-robbery in this country. Because yes, we still have robbers and courts. But they should come back after thorough training on how to relate and how to use the weapons they are given to. I, I love and, the way you're highlighting training Yes, aspects. and I want to correct a statement you people are making. It was not a stray bullet. 
a stray bullet cannot eat a person twice. It wasn't a stray bullet. I heard, I heard firsthand what happened. The man shot From those that witnessed it, you know. One up, uh, you know, then um, the two to the crowd. Exactly. A stray bullet cannot eat a person twice. This is what I heard, though. One went up. The second one hit, came the, down, hit the ground and bounced to the his thighs, one. right? The second bullet hit the ground and bounced to Kaladi. The fact is, okay. Then the third one went to his pubic region. Yes. Uh, I mean, that's, that's so clean how can you call that And I also heard that the guy bullet. was screaming, I go keep person, you know. I go you. shoot person, I go keep person. So let's even talk about the mental you know? state of the men we put on our streets with guns in the name mm. of police protecting us. Mm. Um, reading through this story, it doesn't seem to me like we are deliberate about understanding that there is a mental, there is a case of what is the mental state of the people going? Because if you're shooting sporadically at a viewing center, a football viewing center, and it's not like you're in a war zone, football viewing centers where innocent citizens are watching, how do we ensure that, in your own opinion, what would you recommend in terms of the mental state of the people in the force? I even think we must carry out sort of like a radical okay. test um, first to okay, show that those who are dead uh, okay, have sense. You know. Because let's look at it this way. The, I don't know how, how far they do, they're going to their scrutiny before they, they select new members of police force, of Nigerian police force. But from what we're seeing, it seems like they just go and pick out or agurus that do not have proper home training, that do not understand the value of life. And you know, some of these guys are probably not even new to ammunition. They've been doing this as criminals and they've been looking for a way to, to, no, to no, legalize no, themselves, to make it licensed. I, think I, would like I to can now hold guns. This. I remember having a conversation with one policeman one time and I was complaining about all of these things we're talking about. And the man said, guys, we are not paid. One. And do you think that even and part civil of the reforms... Paid, other civil servants, are they paid well? I mean, if, if the excuse is, we are not paid well. Ah, who is paid well? No, even like is, that, so you're not paid well, then you have to start We've had cases and cases of corruption in the police force where their pensions were looted by men and, and all of those things. But in a case for reform... Do you think we are within? It, 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 it makes sense to say let our policemen get a higher pay. No, Maybe they'll no, be motivated. No, no. That is not, to, see, that is not a reform. If you're going that way, that the, the policemen are underpaid. Lots of parastatals, government agencies, and other are underpaid as well. So, are you not telling me that they should pick guns and start robbing or killing people? And if we try to give them that kind of reform, that means you are encouraging them to keep on killing so that they can strong arm the government to increase their salary. Mm -hmm. So anytime they want an increment in their subsidies or whatever, they go and kill. That's exactly you know, what we're saying. The questions about our security so, of our life, homeland security and our citizens it can never be exhausted, not even in a one-hour conversation. We're right. going to have a short break very soon, but we've been talking about Coladi Johnson's death. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's important that we don't just have another debt on our hands. We use this to drive. So if, if you see the hashtag, please lend your voice to this as a young person, because if it's affecting one person, it's affecting all of us. So, guys, um, we're going on a quick short break now. We'll be back and then we'll continue this conversation. Don't go away. Stay with us. All right, welcome back again to our studios. This is still Robbie Minds. And before we went on the break, we were talking about the death of Colade Johnson in the hands of the police. And we're just using it to x-ray the bigger issues in terms of police reforms, and particularly SARS. We've looked at SARS. Recommendations have come over and over again on how we can uh, maybe even eradicate it completely. But we're still talking about reforms. And with me here still in the studios, I'm going to sign up very quickly, but I need them to give us their parting shirts. And I still have the niece of Kolade here. And she's told us about the pain of losing her beloved uncle. But are there guidelines, Bolade and Roxy, that you think the government can follow going forward to ensure that we don't have another case of Kolade on our hands? Well, um, I think for starters, their superiors should be sanctioned when they misbehave. When they shoot guns in the air, when they commit a homicide or murder, whichever the case is, the DPOs, uh, the ones in charge of that jurisdiction or that station, should be sanctioned. Because what I'm trying to say is this. They usually cover up these things. You know why they do? Nobody wants anything to affect their promotion or their incentive, you know, or their benefits. Nobody wants it to affect their promotion. They want to keep on having their names in the good books <coughs> of, the, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So as a police officer, as a DPO, what you do is you cover it up. You probably warn the police officer, don't do this again, and then it ends. But if the superiors are being sanctioned, trust me, if something like this happens and the, the, the superiors, the, the orgasm of that particular officer maybe loses some benefits or, or they probably don't promote him in the next six years or whatever, there'll be an improvement. Mm -hmm. And this has nothing to do with 
let's increase their money. We want everybody's salary to be good, yes. But even at that, what are the measures, what are the modalities put in place to ensure that these things are being curbed massively? Because it's, it's, it's a disease right now. Mm. And it's eating us, it's killing us. We see police and we're scared. We, don't, mm. we no longer feel safe. When you see your policeman and yes. you're scared, oh, it's, it's, it's bad. Let's, it's really the, bad. Let's, let's take you, Dollar Poor. Um, we don't want another color day on our hands. We don't another case of color day on our hands. What can the government do? And what can every citizen do to ensure this doesn't happen? Like I said before, the government first, they have to go back into the SARS and SARS, or police as general. They have to start by giving out reorientation to all members. Or in fact, you should just disband, dis um, disband every one of them. Then you should come back with new people, new faces, um, eligible people that actually have conscience. Because I feel a man with a gun that actually can aim to shoot someone does not have a conscience. Hmm. All right. Now, I don't know if you guys are planning to have anything like a foundation for Color Day, but um, what next? Is there anything to show that his legacy and his memories um, would always stay with us? My, um, some of us that know Color Day, that knew him back in university, we are a small circle of friends. You know, we, we make the Unibene alumni, you know, groomed in friendship. Some of us have decided that um, going forward, we would see what we can do to ensure that Color Day's child, the little boy called Tyron, goes to school and um, his school fees are being taken care of and his welfare and everything, you know, on the, the little way we can. And, and we also need the government to also know that he left his son behind. Mm -hmm. So they should also be responsible for it also. All right, Lagos and Nigeria. Color Day mm -hmm. left his son with us. Tyron is his name. Um, and we're hoping that he's going to have everything he needs to raise him well. We're going on a quick short break now. We'll be back shortly for another segment of this program. Stay with us.